so welcome back. We're looking at another another kit I've designed this week. Um, again, it's a tiny, tiny little uh, kit for a wagon. Uh, this one's more complicated than we're, the one we looked at uh, last time for uh, numerous reasons that we'll we'll, we'll discuss shortly. Um, this is actually a, a Royal Arsenal Railway gunpowder van. Um, it was designed from the outset to be available both for 9mm gauge and um, 6.5mm gauge for if you were modelling kind of 18 inch gauge um, railways. So it's actually in two parts. This is the, the 9mm gauge version which has this, um, this separate kind of chassis part. So it's based on the, similar to the Sand Hutton um, railway um, underframes if that, if that means anything to people. Um, again, it's got a, a slot for a Greenwich coupling should you wish to wish to use it. Um, and as I say, it uses um, has nine millimeter uh, gauge wheels. Um, the six point five millimeter version obviously has um, wheels for the the narrower gauge, but also uses a slightly different underframe um, so that it can have these um, magnets held centrally, uh, which is the the kind of coupling approach um, adopted by kind of the six point five. Uh, brand where these are these are sold under, uh, but you can see it just um, fits fits in the in the bottom um, in place of the the nine millimeter one. Obviously, you'd build it for one gauge and then glue glue in the chassis that you wanted. Um, mine tends to be stored with the the nine millimeter version because that's that's where I've used it most. Um, yeah, so um, but it's a uh, one of the things we talked about in the the video looking at the Foley. Um, oil refinery flat wagon was that um, you have to be careful with orientation and the way you print models especially through um, shapeways if you want to make sure you maintain things like uh, details between um, plank wooden planks and things and you can see that this what this print well this model has really good definition between all the the planks and lots of line lots of detail on the door and the hinges and things um, as well as kind of on the on the under frame um, and that's because this is um, isn't just a 3D print. Um, it's actually a, a combination of a 3D frame uh, and then metal inserts, um, etched metal inserts, um, to give you the the actual walls themselves. Um, I'll put up a, a photo on the screen because it's a bit difficult to see now. It's painted, um, but essentially the print are these kind of four uprights on either side, uh, five uprights on this side, uh, and then yeah, the door and that and that kind of thing. Um, and then the, the the roof is a piece of curved um, metal covered in tissue paper to give the kind of um, asphalt like roof um, effect. Um, obviously, there's a metal metal floor here as well. Um, but yeah, you you kind of insert. You can just about see inside here. You insert the metal um, sides. I think we I think I pushed in the two ends first, and then the two sides, and the whole thing then kind of locks together. Um, I did add, you can kind of see here, some super glue uh, when, when doing it um, to give um, to just make sure they don't fall out. But they would actually stay in quite well uh, and the paint often would just hold them in, but, um, belt and braces and all that. Um, and you can see how the, the chassis fits. So there's a tiny little triangular fillet in each corner, uh, which the, the metal plate um, rests on. And then the two little um, cutouts on the side um, hold these hold these bars. Um, I got the, the drawings for this from um, Mark Smithers book on the uh, Royal Arsenal Railways and, and that's, it's, a, it's a really interesting really interesting book. Again, I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen it. Um, it contained a drawing which is slightly bigger than this model but not hugely bigger um, by Jeremy Tilson. Um, unfortunately, um, there are a few issues uh, with the drawing. Um, it's not the first time I've started to build a model and found issues with drawings but again it's um every other version of this model i've seen in kit form has the same errors suggesting that nearly everybody else has also used the same the same drawings um essentially it's to do with well it's two things the the beam along the bottom here and along the sides um aren't quite at the same height on the real thing again i'll, I'll try and throw up a photo um so you can see what i'm talking about on the real thing but this beam is ever so slightly lower uh, than the side one, uh, which is kind of obvious in the drawings because you can kind of see that it comes further down, but the top doesn't isn't in the right position on the drawings. Um, and then the side effect of that is that these planks are all the same height and they're obviously put 
on working from the bottom upwards um, but because um, the bar is further down on the sides on the sorry on the end than on the sides the plank lines shouldn't line up um, it's a bit difficult to get it in the right light here but you can kind of just about see that these lines as you walk up the as you work your way up the sides don't match up um, and it was one of those things I spotted quite late on in the model and had to change the change some of the artwork um, but it was one of those things that once I'd spotted it kind of kept jumping out at me as I say hopefully I'll put a photo up and you'll be able to see it um, in detail on the on the real thing um, the, the preserved examples at um, Conway Valley Railway Museum and it's really obvious once you've seen it that uh, that the, the the sides don't line up. So as I say, it's interesting that if you see this a, a gun pad, this gunpowder wagon in any other um, kit form, um, I think as I say, I don't think I've yet seen one that has the the planks and the and the beams in the same in the correct place to match the prototype. They're all they're all wrong in some in some way. Um, Unfortunately, however nice this is in, in both 6.5 and 9mm gauge, it's currently out of stock um, that for two reasons. One, uh, we stopped selling it as a 3D print and um, etched kit um, because um, although it's hollow um, with no roof, so it's just kind of a, a, a rectangle frame um, and uses very, very little material. Shapeways changed the way they were charging for prints which meant it wasn't just the volume of material used it was the volume that the whole uh, model took up especially for something this small where they couldn't put another model inside it for for making the best use of the print tray which meant that these became ridiculously expensive to produce um, so um, one of the other um, modelers um, involved um, James Hilton he did most of the 6.5 um, range he took one of the last kits we had and assembled it and then we had some a resin um, castings done from that assembled kit for the body so you'd still print the chassis which was quite cheap to print but the body um, would be a, a resin casting um, but we're currently out of stock of those I don't know whether that was just a an issue with uh, the molds or whether we've just not made any more recently but again uh, I'll put a link to the kit in the instructions and if you want one um, leaving an expression of interest and, and at some point in the future we might go back and, and do some more um, it may be that actually I could try and see if I can print the frame on my own printer uh, and see if that reduces the the cost to something acceptable um, we'll have to see um, but yeah it's um, as I say uh, I, I love that I like this one I think it's um, it's it's a really nice little wagon especially um, as I say using the tissue paper for the effect on the roof um, worked really really well um, and it, it really does show um, you know lots of people throw models up on on shapeways without necessarily thinking about um, how the printing process affects the the model itself um, and as I said if this had been an entire print then because of the overhang of the roof or even just the frame across around the top um, the entire side all this planking would have been touching support material so that you could print the the top frame um, and that would have completely ruined um, the plank effect that would just have um, completely obliterated all that detail um, so it's it's another good example of why mixing uh, materials leads to really good kits um, it's just obviously it makes them slightly more complex and, and, and possibly expensive to produce um, but I think it's definitely the way that um, the best way at the moment we have for um, producing really high detailed uh, kits we can't rely on just the 3d printing on its own um, so yeah so hopefully you've liked that um, as I say, I'll leave links to all the books and, and, and models etc in the in the instructions